ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اما بعد ان شاء الله we continue with the imam ibn al qayyim alayhi rahmatullah and his words that were collected under the title of tibb al qulub medicine or cure for uh, the hearts and uh, the last time uh, we finished talking uh, about the benefits of al-isti'adha seeking refuge with Allah uh, Azza wa Jal and then the Shaykh spoke about the three sets of verses that are in the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal uh, where Allah Azza wa Jal shows the believers how they would protect themselves from the evils of the human shaitans, the human satans, and the satans who are from uh, the jinn. The uh, ayat uh, in Surah Al-Mu'minun uh, 96 and uh, 97, and the ayat in Surah Al-A'raf uh, 199-200, and also uh, the ayat from Surah Fussilat, uh, 36, uh, 34, and on up until 36. These are the three sets of ayat, and we mentioned uh, what Al Imam Al Hafiz Ibn Kathir said about these three sets in the beginning of uh, the explanation of Surah Al Fatiha when he spoke about Al Isti'adha. So the Sheikh says that the Quran uh, guided us to. Uh, pushing away those two enemies, the enemies, the human Satan and the Satan from the uh, jinn. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal showed us how to protect ourselves, how to push away the harm or the evil of these two enemies by the easiest means, by the easiest ways, and that is by isti'adha, seeking refuge uh, with Allah Azza wa Jal. This is, you do with the uh, the shayateen now uh, also he mentions al-i'rad anil jahileen turning away uh, the ignorant ones avoiding them not uh, treating them in the same way and the third one is to push or to repel their evil by actually kindness not treating them the same but treating them with kindness Allah uh, also mention the greatness of the luck, the greatness of the share of the one whom, uh, whom Allah grants uh, this. It's in Surah Fussilat, وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبُرُ None is granted this except those who are patient. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ And none is granted this except one who has great luck or great share that is with Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, he said that by doing this, uh, the uh, person who does that, uh, he will attain uh, that the, he will attain the benefit of the evil of his enemy being stopped uh, and halted. Also, he will benefit that this enemy will turn into a friend. And also the people will love him and they will praise him and he will also overpower and defeat his desires. Also, his heart will be free. He will be free from the evils of ghil and haqd, having hate, uh, grudges. His heart will be free from those evils. Uh, also, uh, the people will be uh, comfortable with him, will be at peace with him, even uh, his enemy. His enemy will find comfort, will start to have comfort with him. 
that is his enemy, aside from the other people. Uh, the Sheikh said this is other than what he attains of the honor from Allah, the great reward from Allah and Allah being pleased with him. And this is the greatest luck. This is the greatest share. Ajilan wa ajilan. That is immediate and rushed in this life. And also this is the greatest uh, share that he would have also in the next life. Now, since this cannot be attained except by patience, Allah said, وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا None is granted this except those who are patient. Uh, Surah Fussil at 35. He said, فَإِنَّ النَّزِقَ الطَّائِشْ لَا يَصْبِرُ عَلَى الْمُقَابَلَةِ For the one who is uh, hasty, the one who is hasty, the one who rushes into things, he is not uh, patient. He does not stand firm. He does not endure. He is someone who is shaky and hasty, rushes to do things without thinking, doesn't want to be patient and endure, and therefore he will not be uh, attaining uh, this great share with Allah Azza wa And he said also that since, uh, since uh, anger is markabu shaytan, al-ghadab markabu shaytan, since anger is the vehicle of Satan, so al nafs al shaytan ala al nafs al The soul that is the type of the angry soul or the angry self, it cooperates. It cooperates with the shaytan over against the soul that is mutmainna, al nafs al that is peaceful and tranquil. Uh, the soul that is peaceful and tranquil, it will order one to repel evil with kindness, right? So uh, here you have shaitan and the soul that is the angry soul. They are ganging up together against the comfortable, the peaceful soul. So Allah Azza wa Jal ordered the believer to help the peaceful soul and nafs al to help it by seeking refuge with Allah from the shaitan. So this isti'adha, seeking refuge with Allah from the shaitan, it supports the nafs al It supports the peaceful, tranquil, comfortable soul. So it has power now. It becomes strong and it will be able to fight back jaysh and nafs al ghadabiya it will be able to fight back the army of the angry self. Also, the support of patience will also come, and patience comes along with it victory. al nasr ma'a sabr as in the hadith. The victory comes along with patience. So uh, you have uh, seeking refuge with Allah, from the shaitan, and then you have the patience. These are two supplies, basically. Uh, also, the uh, supply of iman and tawakkul, the supply of faith, uh, belief, and also reliance upon Allah. They will come also, they will support, they will render support. فَأَبْطَلَ sultan الشَّيْطَانِ Therefore, all of these supplies all of these supports coming together, they will invalidate, they will invalidate the authority, they will invalidate the evidence of the shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّهُ uh, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ سُلْطَانٌ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Surah An-Nahl 99, it says that he, certainly, that is shaitan, he certainly does not have authority over those who believed, over those who believed, and upon their Lord they rely, they depend. This word Sultan, this word Sultan, it means uh, authority, sovereignty, power, rule, reign, dominion, domination. All of these words are, are in there. This is the meaning of Sultan, Sultan. Hmm? And we have the word Sultan in English, which is translated from the Arabic, 
which means the ruler or you know the, uh, the it was taken from the time of the Ottomans I believe the Sultan right so they took that from there now what is the meaning of this word Sultan the Shaitan certainly has no Sultan he has no Sultan over the believers so now the Sheikh will analyze this word Sultan he says that Mujahid, Akrima, and the Mufassirun, the people of the Fsir, they said that the Shaitan has no Sultan over those who believed and who rely upon their Lord. They have, he has no Sultan. Those scholars of Tafsir, they said he has no Hujja, no proof. Laysa lahu Hujja. Right? So the shaitan has no sultan, no proof, no evidence against the believers who rely upon Allah. Now, the sheikh says, commenting on this, he said, sawab? what is correct? That the shaitan has no way to control, to command, to have command over the believers. لَيْسَ لَهُ طَرِيقٌ أَنْ يَتَسَلَّطَ بِهِ عَلَيْهِمْ he has no way, he has no means by which he can take control, by which he can reign over the believers. This is not uh, just hujja proof. He has no way in terms of proof and evidence, and he has no way also in terms of power. So Sultan, the Shaitan, has no Sultan over the believers who rely upon Allah. He has no sultan. It is mentioned in the books of tafsir that he has no evidence. The sheikh says, actually, we should say he has no sultan in terms of proof and evidence. So he has no power in terms of evidence. And he has also no power in terms of control and ability over the believers. So al-qudra, ability, is included in the meaning of the word sultan. The, word, the ability, Qudra, is included in the Sultan. He says even the Hujja, the proof, the proof and evidence, it was called Sultan, it was called Sultan because the one who has the proof, he actually reigns over, he beats, he takes control over uh, the one who is against him. So the one who has evidence, he has power and authority that by which he can reign over uh, as if he has power and ability in terms of might in, in his hand, right? So the word Sultan then, it means power and ability. And it means also proof and evidence. And actually it is called, the proof and evidence is called Sultan in Arabic because the one who has the proof, he is stronger. He overcomes the other side. How? By the sultan that he has. The sultan of the hujja. The power and authority of proof and evidence. So here when Allah Azza wa says about the shaitan, that he has no sultan, no sultan over those who believed and uh, they rely upon their Lord, it means he has no evidence he has also no reign, no control, no power and authority over them. Allah Azza wa Jal informed that uh, the shaitan has no, uh, yani the enemy, yani the shaitan, the enemy of Allah, he has no power, no authority over his servants who are sincere, who are purely sincere for him who are relying upon him. Allah said in Surah Al-Hijr, verses 39 to 42. He said, Rabbi, bima agwaytani, la ajma'in, now the Sultan shows up again 
the uh, verse that was mentioned before from Surah An-Nahl, this one now, this, these sets of ayat from Surah Al-Hijr 39 to 42. Uh, let's uh, see the uh, translation of that from the Noble Quran. It says what means, Iblis, Satan said, O my Lord, because you misled me, because you misled me, I shall indeed adorn the path of error for them. I shall indeed adorn the path of error for them, that is for mankind, on the earth, and I shall mislead them all, except your chosen guided slaves among them. Mukhlasin. Mukhlasin, chosen and uh, sincere. And they are sincere. Allah made them sincere and chose them because they are sincere for him and they are also uh, always, the next life is on their mind. This is something that has passed before. This ayah uh, was mentioned before that Allah made them, uh, chose them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, made them sincere because the next life, al akhirah is always on their mind. So they become mukhlasin. Okay? طيب. So here they use. Uh, except your chosen guided slaves amongst uh, them. Allah said, this is a way which will lead straight to me. This is a way that which will lead straight to me. Certainly you shall have no authority over my slaves except those who follow you of the Gawin. Yani mushrikeen and those who go astray. So, again, certainly you shall have no authority over my slaves except those who follow you of uh, those who go astray, criminals, polytheists, and evildoers. So, this is what Allah says here. Now, in Surah An-Nahl, the verses 99 to 100, it says, Surely he has no authority over those who believe and they rely upon their Lord. His sultan, his authority is only uh, for those, he has authority only upon those who, who take him as an ally those who befriend him, and those who associate partners in worship uh, with him. This is now Al-Hijr, uh, Surah Al-Nahl 99. Uh, let's go through that from the Noble Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily he has no power over those who believe and put their trust only in their Lord. His power is only over those who obey and follow him, that is shaitan, who obey and follow him, and those who join partners with him. Hmm? Those who join partners, uh, set up rivals uh, with Allah. Now, uh, this includes two matters. Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim says this includes two matters. First is negating his sultan. Negating his power, his authority, his reign, and invalidating it, making it, rendering it invalid. And that is for the people of Tawheed and Ikhlas, those who are the people of monotheism, the people of sincerity. The second matter is affirming the Sultan, affirming the authority of the Shaitan over Ahl al-Shirk wa ala man tawalla. So, affirming the authority over the people of shirk, polytheism, and those who obey him, those who befriend him, those who take him as an ally. So there is sultan, authority that is negated. That is, it is negated. So shaitan has no authority over the believers who are sincere and put their trust in Allah. Sultan, authority that is affirmed, and that is that the shaitan has authority over those who are mushrikun, polytheists, and those who obey him and befriend him. 
when the enemy of Allah, the shaitan, he knew that Allah Azza wa will not give him power over the people of Tawheed and Ikhlas, the people of monotheism and sincerity, the shaitan said, as in Surah Sad, 82-83, قَالَ فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ by your might, I will sway them all. I will make them deviate, all of them, except your servants amongst them who are mukhlasin, chosen, guided, sincere ones. So the enemy of Allah, the shaitan, he knew that the one who turns to Allah, Azza wa Jal, and uh, was sincere, the one who trusts Allah, puts his trust in Allah, he will not be able, the shaitan, he knew that he will not be able to make him deviate. He will not be able to uh, sway him. And rather, the authority that he has is upon those who obey him, those who befriend him, and those who associate uh, partners or set, set him up as partner in worship with Allah. So the sheikh says, those people, the people of shirk, the people of uh, those who obey the shaitan, these are his subjects, these are his folks, and these are the ones uh, who follow him. So he is the sultan for them, he is their sultan, and he is the one that they follow, he is their leader. Now, if it was said then that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned the sultan, in the affirmative, that there is sultan over the awliya, over the allies, in this place, the allies uh, of this place, the allies of the shaitan, the friends of the shaitan, he has authority over them. This is affirmed in this place. Now, how is it then being negated in another place? Surah Saba, 20, 21. Surah Saba, it says, وَلَقَدْ صَدَّقَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِبْلِيسُ ظَنَّهُ فَاتَّبَعُهُ إِلَّا فَرِيقًا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَمَا كَانَ لَهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمَ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِالْآخِرَةِ مِمَّنْ هُوَ مِنْهَا فِي شَكْ Saba 20-21 Now here let's see what the Noble Quran says about that. This is now talking about Iblis that his thought uh, that he thought about them, his thought that he thought about them has been affirmed, has been affirmed. He thought something and it came true, right? That is about the, uh, those who will follow him. So they did follow him as he thought. They affirmed his thought, uh, except for a group of the believers. Then it says, and he has no, or he had no authority over them except for us to know who believes in the next life uh, from those to distinguish who believes in the next life from those who are in doubt regarding it. Now, 20, 21, Surah uh, Saba. And indeed, Iblis, Shaitan, did prove true his thought about them. And they followed him, all except a group of the believers. And he, that is Iblis, had no authority over them, except that we might rest him, uh, who, uh, except that we might test him, who believes in the hereafter, from him who is in doubt about it. So now back to this ayat. Here he says, he has no authority over them. He had no authority over them. Them here refers to who? It says that uh, the idea or the thought of Satan proved true, proved true, proved to be true. So they followed him except for a group of the believers. And he had no authority over them. Right? So them here, is it referring to those who followed him, Taba'u, or is it referring to the believers? that he had no uh, authority over them. It says he had no authority over them except for us to know. They translated it as for us to test. As who believes in the next life, who, and who is in doubt about it. 
Right? So now the Sheikh, uh, his question now, he says now, he affirmed in that place that was already mentioned that he has authority over those who follow him. Right? So now here, he is negating it. He is negating it. So the answer now is in that pronoun, them. He had no authority over them. Right? If it was re uh, in reference to the believers, then the question is dropped now. Because if, and we know from previously what was mentioned, that he has no authority over the believers. So again, this ayah is just affirming that he has no pr pr uh, uh, authority over uh, the believers. So it means then he has no authority over the believers. It's just a test for them. We are just examining them by Iblis, by the shaitan, so that we know who believes uh, in the next life and uh, we, we make certain who believes in the next life and who is in doubt regarding it. And if it was referring to فَاتَّبَعُوا uh, that the thought of Iblis proved through, proved through, so they followed him. They followed him. If it was referring now, this sultan, this authority, is referring to those, or reference to those, who are uh, following him. And وَهُوَ الظَّاهِرِ he said. And this is what seems to be the correct one, the correct understanding. Right? So here, then, the meaning would be, uh, we did not give uh, sultan uh, for him, over them, we did not give him authority over them, except to know who believes in the next life. Now the Sheikh quotes Ibn Qutayba, uh, another scholar, Ibn Qutayba. He said that Iblis, when he asked Allah Azza wa Jal for the time to give him time and nadra, Allah gave him time. It's okay, Allah gave him uh, the time. He asked to live and Allah gave him the time to live. So uh, he said then, so he was given the time, uh, he said, I will sway them, and I will make them deviate, and I will order them with such and such, and I will take from these servants, I will take a, a specified and assigned number of them. I will, I will snatch them, I will take them. When he said this, he was not really sure, he was not really sure that what he thought, what he planned is gonna happen, he was not sure. He said it thinking that this is what will happen. So when they followed him and they obeyed him, what he thought about them now became true since now they started obeying him and following him so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then and wama kana taslituna iyyah illa lina'lam al-mu'minina min ash and we did not give him authority except to know the believers from those who are in doubt meaning ya'ni na'lamuhum mawjudin zahirin fa yahqq al-qawl wa yaqa'u al-jaza meaning we know them to exist and to emerge in reality, so that the uh, statement of Allah that he mentioned will become true, will come to pass, and also the reward, the punishment that will be uh, the consequence or the result will also happen. And hmm? here he's saying that because Allah knows what was, what will be, and even what will not be. If it happens, how it will be, right? So here it says, إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمْ Except for us to know. Ibn Qutayba says, to know, to know, uh, knowledge that exists. And yani Allah knows that it will happen, right? But knowing it when it happens, this is different from, yani it exists, it happens, it, it actually happens on earth. Allah knew it will happen. Right? But then now, he will know that exactly uh, uh, it, exist, it actually existed. Right? So this is the way. It's not like 
he doesn't know it until it happens. Yani, alhamdulillah, none of the believers, the true believers of, of, uh, in Allah, none of them thinks that Allah does not know something before it happens, except of some people who yani, got a little bit uh, yani, astray or far astray, right? This is something that is uh, clear. So those ayat in which Allah says, إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمْ Except for us to know, right? Knowledge that, knowledge that exists, and yani knowledge that it happens, it actualizes. Allah knows it before it happens, and then it actually does happen, right? So uh, that, is, that is the case. So then uh, the Shaykh says, the Sultan then that the Shaytan has over them here, it is uh, the Sultan, the authority that he has over those who do not believe in the next life those who have doubts about it. And those are the one who befriended him, those who, who are the one who followed him, those who are the ones who uh, uh, took him as partner with Allah, set him up as partner with Allah. So here, the authority will be affirmed, not negated. So this ayah actually agrees, this, uh, this ayah here from Surah Saba, it agrees with the rest of the ayat. Right? It agrees with the rest of the ayat that uh, he uh, has uh, sultan over those who follow him, those who obey him, those who befriend him and take him as an ally. Now, what if it is said, the sheikh goes on to say, what if it is said now, what do you do with the uh, verse that is in Surah Ibrahim? When the shaitan says to the people of the fire, وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي Surah Ibrahim 22. The shaitan, when he gives his speech in the fire, he says, I had no authority over you except that I called you and you responded to me. You answered my call. This is now in Surah Ibrahim 22. And this actually is the statement of the shaitan that Allah reports to us, that he will speak in the fire and he will tell them that. So here the shaykh says, this is even though it is the statement of the shaitan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reports it, approving it. Allah reports it, approving it not denying it, not rejecting it. Hmm? And this shows that it is so. And the shaitan is saying, I had no sultan. Right? So I think you understand now why the sheikh is, <laughs> and he's going through the details of this word sultan. It shows up somewhere, it shows up somewhere else, it shows up somewhere else. So does the shaitan have a sultan or he doesn't? Who does he have authority over? This is what he's trying to conclude. طيب. Now, the shaitan speaks in the fire. He, said, he says to his followers, I had no sultan over you. Now, the sheikh says, this question is good. This question is good. And the answer to it, that the sultan, the authority that is negated in this place in the Quran, Surah Ibrahim, Ayah 22, is actually al-hujjah wal-burhan. It is the evidence and the proof. That is what's being negated here. Meaning, I had no proof or evidence against you that I use against you. As Ibn Abbas عنه, said like that, ما كان لي حجة أحتج بها عليكم. I didn't have any evidence to use against you. Meaning, I did not show you any proof except that I called you and you responded to me. Do you believed? You believed what I said? And you followed me without a proof, without evidence. As for the Sultan, the authority that Allah affirms in the statement, Inna Sultanu ala ladina yatawallawna, Surah An Nahl, Ayah 100, that the, his authority is only over those who follow him or befriend him, take him as an ally, then this is him having the authority over them by seducing them, by luring them and by misguiding them, and by having uh, control over them 
in a way that he is pushing them and pressuring them. He is uh, basically inciting them to uh, disbelieve and to fall into shirk. And he is uh, uh, once again provoking them to uh, fall into it. And he will not even let them uh, abandon it. Like uh, uh, Allah said, Alam tara anna arsalna shayatina ala al kafirin ta'uzzuhum azzan. This is in Surah Maryam, Ayah 83. Alam tara anna arsalna shayatin ala al kafirin ta'uzzuhum azzan. Let's see, uh, let's take it from the Noble Quran here. Allah Azza wa Jal says what means the Shaykh will go through the meaning of ta'uzzuhum. So we'll get the uh, meaning from the Noble Quran. Uh, the the uh, ayah says what means, See you not that we have sent the shayateen, the devils, against the disbelievers to push them to do evil. To push them to do evil. Now, regarding this word, ta'uzzuhum azzan. Here they translated it as push them to do evil. We sent. We send the shayateen over the disbelievers, pushing them to do evil, right? Now this word, ta'uzzuhum azzan, is translated as uh, pushing them to do evil here. Ibn Abbas, he said, tughrihim igra'an, luring and seducing uh, them. Hmm? Tempting them to fall into it. And in one word that was reported from Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, تحرضهم تحريضا It urges them, the shayateen, they urge them, they provoke them, they instigate them, they prompt them. In another word that is reported also in the meaning, تزعجهم إلى المعاصي إزعاجا Pestering them to disobey, disturbing them, upsetting them. Uh, decomposing them in a way that they are pushing them to commit the sins. In another wording that was reported regarding ta'uzzuhum azzan, tuqiduhum, tuqiduhum. Iqad is setting up a fire. When you set up a fire, you kindle a fire. This is iqad. Meaning, tuharrikuhum kama yuharraku ma bil iqad tahta. It moves them exactly like the water is moved by putting the fire under it. The water in the pot, in the pot, you put the fire under it, you kindle the fire, and it starts moving, bubbling, right? Stirring them up, stirring them up. Another word that is reported from Al-Akhfash regarding the meaning of Ta'uzzuhum Azzan is Tuhijuhum. Again, he had to hijum, meaning setting them up on a fire, igniting them, igniting them, starting a fire. Hmm? Now the Sheikh says, "Hakikatu dalik al az." The reality of this word al az ta'uzzuhum azan. This az, the reality about it or of its meaning is at tahrik wa tahiyij. It is movement, stirring up. Along with tahij, uh, putting on uh, fire, uh, kindling uh, the fire, moving them and stirring them up. And uh, from this, the Arabs say about the pot that has the water that is boiling in it, al Qidr, they call it actually Aziz, right? Ta'uzzuhum Azzan, right? And the word used for this sound of water bubbling moving when you uh, put it under the fire in the pot, uh, they call that Aziz. They call that Aziz. That is because the water, it moves when it boils. And from this, there is the hadith which says, لِجَوْفِهِ أَزِيزٌ كَأَزِيزِ الْمِرْجَلْ مِنَ الْبُكَاءِ His, uh, when he recites the Quran, alayhi salatu wasalam, his chest 
has sound this sound as is uh, humming buzzing hmm? or the hum or the buzz uh, this sound uh, his chest has this uh, like the uh, movement of the uh, the sound of the boiler the sound of the boiler due to crying min al buka right when you recite the quran and he cries so uh, the word aziz is used and it has the sound of humming that resembles the sound or the buzz or the hum of the boiler due to crying because of crying so the word aziz here uh, he mentions from abu ubaida uh, the word al aziz it means al iltihab wal haraka uh, flaming, being uh, flammable, on, or uh, the fire is kindled, and movement. He said, nar fil hatab, like the fire when it catches into the wood and it starts, the flame is started, is kindled, right? And uh, he said, you call, is qidrak, and he put your pot on fire, meaning put more fire you know, move the fire under it, yani blow onto it or do something to make more flames under it. They use this word, izza qidrak. Do is to your pot, hmm? meaning put more flames under the pot. Also, they say, itazzat al qidr, itazzat al qidr, yani this happened to it. Yani when you uh, push the flames to grow and to be bigger, now uh, they say, uh, if it, that happened, they say the pot has tazzat. Now there is a lot of flame uh, under it. So now it becomes, uh, so it has more uh, fire under it, so therefore it boils even more and more. Now, the conclusion now for this az. Once again, Alam Tara, Anna Arsalna Shayatina Al Al Kafirin Tauzuhum Azan. Did you not see that we sent the Shayateen, the Satans, we sent them to the disbelievers, Tauzuhum Azan, pushing them, prompting them to do evil. Now this word az here, it has two meanings. The meaning of movement and stirring up at Tahrik. The second meaning, al-iqad wal ilhab, setting up the fire and uh, making the fire has has uh, making it ha have more flames into it, right? And those two are close. He said, those two are close. For the meaning of al az is tahrikun khasun bi wa ilhab. Now this is the conclusion of this word as it is a special movement that happens. Al-Az is a special movement, a special specific type of stirring up that has within it instigation. It has instigation. Uh, pro it, has, uh, it, it, it is provoked. And also it has flames. And those flames are uh, increased. Those flames are kindled and or ignited and uh, increased. By So the Sheikh says, goes on to say, this is uh, of the authority that he has, that he has over his awliya, over his allies, the shaitan has over his allies and the people of shirk, the people of polytheism. But he does not have for that any sultan, any authority in terms of proof and evidence. Rather, they only responded to him by him simply calling them. He simply calling them. And when these calls of his matched and agreed with their desires and their objectives, then they are actually the ones who helped against themselves, uh, helped against themselves, and they gave control to their enemy they are the ones who gave their enemy control 
over them. Uh, that is by them agreeing with him, by them following him. So, فَلَمَّا أَعْطَوْا بِأَيْدِيهِمْ وَاسْتَأْسَرُوا لَهُ سُلِّطْ عَلَيْهِمْ عُقُوبَةً لَهُ So, when they stretched out their hands to him, they gave him, يعني, he asked for their hands and they gave him, they gave him their hands, so he took their hands, he pulled them, and now they are captivated. استأسروا. They rendered themselves captives for him. And since they did that, Allah gave him authority over them as a punishment. So this provoking, this instigation, this igniting and stirring them up, pushing them up to do evil, right? He did that to them and they agreed, they followed him because of their desires. Now, this push and this prompt that he was doing, this pressuring and pestering that he was doing to them, he actually had no proof or evidence for that, except that he called them and they, they accepted, right? So in reality, they followed him, they befriended him, they obeyed him, therefore, they were the ones who gave him authority over them, and because of that, Allah punished them by actually giving them, giving the shaitan reign and authority over them, right? And with this meaning, the shaykh said, by mentioning this now, the meaning of the ayah, another ayah, the meaning of the ayah will emerge, will become clear, will become apparent. Now, this is not dealing with the shaitan, this is dealing with the disbelievers. The ayah says, وَلَنْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ سَبِيلًا Surah An-Nisa, ayah 141. That Allah will not give way to the disbelievers over the believers. Allah will not give any way for the believers, for the disbelievers over the believers. Hmm? Now, this ayah, the Sheikh says, عَلَى عُمُومِهَا وَظَاهِرِهَا we, we take it, we take its general meaning, general comprehensive meaning, and we take it uh, according to the apparent meaning uh, of it, that Allah will not give, will not give way, any authority, for the disbelievers over the disbelievers in any way. So he takes it as it is the comprehensive general meaning and according to the apparent meaning. He said, rather, what happens is that the believers, disobedience and opposition happens from them. Disobedience and opposition that goes against faith, that goes against Iman, and this uh, will give the disbelievers uh, a way over them, and this way will be given to the disbelievers over the believers according to the opposition that the believers fall into. So they are the one, they are the ones who were the cause. They are the ones who were the cause that led to giving way for the disbelievers over them. Uh, he said like they were the cause of that uh, on the day of Uhud, the battle of Uhud, by disobeying the messenger and opposing him. So yeah, as you know, in the battle of Uhud, at the end of the battle, the disbelievers, they had way. They uh, killed some of the believers and like that. So how did that happen? It happened because those archers, they moved from their place, the spot, right? So they disobeyed and therefore, according to that disobedience, the disbelievers were given way over the believers, right? The Sheikh said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not give the shaitan uh, over the servant any sultan authority. Up until the servant of Allah gave way to uh, the shaitan, alaykum salam wa by obeying him and by associating partners in worship, 
يعني through the shaitan by obeying the shaitan and joining partners uh, with him يعني in worship with Allah so Allah Azza wa Jal then he gave the shaitan power authority uh, and control reign over the one who did that he said فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ the one who finds goodness within him then let him praise Allah Azza wa Jal and if the shaitan has no control no authority over you then you say Alhamdulillah hmm? وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهُ and the one who finds other than that other than the goodness يعني the shaitan <laughs> has captured you in one way or the other he has taken over you some one way or the other then blame nobody but himself he should blame nobody but himself for التوحيد والتوكل the monotheism the oneness of Allah actualizing the oneness of Allah and التوكل reliance upon Allah والإخلاص and sincerity for Allah Azza wa Jal يمنع سلطانه it will prevent the authority of the shaitan so if you are upon tawheed, you are upon uh, tawakkul, you are sincere for Allah, the shaitan will be barred from having any authority over the person. And shirk, polytheism, and its branches. Yani, uh, the disobediences, the sins, they are from the branches of shirk. Right? There is shirk akbar and shirk asar. Right? But then disobedience is on the side of shirk, exactly as the ta'at are on the sides of on the side of al-iman. So the shirk, polytheism, and its branches, they will necessitate the authority of the shaitan over the one who does that. He said, and all of that, all of that happens by the decree by the divine destiny by the qada, by the destiny of the one whose all whom all the affairs are in his hands subhanahu wa ta'ala everything is referred to him and to him belongs the perfect proof and evidence for if he willed then he would have made the people one nation he would have made the people one nation but then his wisdom and his uh, praise, his dominion uh, necessitated uh, or uh, did not, Allah Azza wa did not will this to happen. Right? If he willed, he would have made all the people one nation of believers, but then his wisdom uh, necessitated otherwise. Uh, then he concludes by saying, فَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ رَبِّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَرَبِّ الْأَرْضِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ To Allah belong all the praise, the Lord of the heavens and the Lord of the earth and the Lord of mankind or the humankind or the Lord of all. And to Him belongs the majesty. وَلَهُ الْكِبْرِيَاءِ To Him belong the uh, majesty in the heavens and earth and on earth and He is the Almighty uh, the all wise these uh, two verses are from surah uh, al jathiyah uh, 36 and uh, 37 uh, allah says so all praise and thanks are allah's the lord of the heavens and the lord of the earth and the lord of the alameen mankind jinn and all that exists and his alone is the majesty in the heavens and the earth and he is the almighty the all wise so now uh, yani the sheikh went through the details of this because his topic is how to protect yourself how to protect the self from being taken over by the shaitan being controlled and reigned over by the shaitan so now he spoke about al isti'adha and then he spoke about uh, uh, the three sets of ayat in the quran 
in which Allah shows how to combat the human shaitan and the jinn shaitan. And then now he mentioned those different ayat in the Quran where it says that the shaitan has no authority or the shaitan has authority and he explained all and the conclusion of that is that the shaitan has no authority on the people of tawheed the people of reliance tawakkul the people of sincerity he has no no sultan no authority over them at all except if they disobey if they follow so according to how much they infringe from their tawheed or take away from their sincerity then the shaitan now they have given the shaitan authority uh, over them as for the disbelievers then since they have already uh, associated partners in worship they followed their desires they have given the shaitan authority over them by them following him and the fact is that the shaitan he has no authority in terms of proof and evidence he has no proof for what he's saying but he called them and they just believed what he said and then they followed him so now that's what he's telling them in that speech in the fire فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ do not blame me rather blame yourselves مَا أَنَا بِمُسْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُسْرِخِي يعني I cannot help you you cannot help me and إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَكْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ he says I disbelieve in the association يعني that you the fact that you associated me in worship with Allah I disbelieve in that right so this is the case and that is the conclusion now the next uh, time inshallah the sheikh will talk about uh, 10 different ways in which uh, one can protect himself from the shaitan the first one being isti'adha seeking refuge with Allah this has been explained in detail so he will not will not go through the details of that but then he will mention different huruz different ways of protecting yourself uh, from the uh, shaitan uh, the total is is 10 inshallah that is the topic of next week inshallah ta'ala uh, is the salah 10 30 now 10 30 tayyib subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi